Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to see how to execute GraphQL queries using the Go programming language. So this is something that a lot of people might not think about when it comes to developing with Go. If you've been keeping up, you'll know that I've created a course as well as an ebook on creating GraphQL APIs using the Go programming language, but not necessarily consuming those APIs. So there's often scenarios that you're, you're a Go developer, you're developing this awesome application, you need to access data from some external web service. Um, you could easily do an HTTP request, but when it comes to GraphQL, things are maybe slightly a little bit different. It can be a little confusing to wrap your head around. This is where I want to kind of make things a little easier in your life when it comes to GraphQL consumption in Go. Um, so you'll notice that in my web browser here, I do have a GitHub page open. Uh, rather than creating our own GraphQL API from scratch, we're just going to leverage one that already exists. Um, so this is actually, I just did a Google search for GraphQL APIs. This seems to be an aggregation of potential APIs. Uh, we're going to be using the countries example. Uh, so if I click try it, uh, we'll be brought into something like this. Uh, you can see the various schemas that exist for it, uh, the queries that you can run. Uh, we're actually going to focus just on the countries query. Um, so if I run it, the data is going to look something like this. Um, so this is going to be the basis of our example. Um, we're actually just going to consume it in Go. And we're going to see it two different ways. Um, there's, of course, more than two uh, variations that you can try. Um, but we're going to focus on two for this example. Um, so if I go into my editor, I do already have a Go project created. It's pretty empty, but it's going to be how we start. Um, and you'll notice that if you followed along, if you've if you've seen my other tutorial on making HTTP requests in Go, uh, this is going to be very similar. We're just going to be adding a little bit to it. So let's go ahead and start by creating an HTTP request. So we're going to create a request itself. We're not going to execute it yet, uh, but we're going to get the ball rolling. So we're going to say HTTP dot new request, and you'll notice that it takes a method. So we're going to be using a post request, the URL, which is going to be the URL to that API. And then the body is going to represent the payload that we send. So the payload being the GraphQL query. It's going to return a request or it's going to return an error. So let's go ahead and say that we're going to say a post request. Let's go ahead and get that URL for this particular query. So I'm going to copy it or for this particular uh, endpoint or GraphQL API. So I'm going to copy it, I'm going to paste it in. Next up, we do have to provide the payload. So I'm just going to leave it as nil for now. We know that it's going to accept, or it's not going to accept, it's going to return a request or an error. Uh, we're going to catch that error. So we're going to say if error not equal to nil, we're going to panic. So let's go ahead and work out the, the nil value. So we're it's, it's yelling at us right now because we're not using request, but let's ignore that for now. Let's go ahead and, and work out what we're going to be sending to this particular API. Now there's numerous ways you can do this. You can create a, uh, a Go data structure and, and add your JSON annotations to it. We're just gonna be using a map for this example. So the map is gonna have a, a key of a string and a value of a string. So we're gonna say JSON data equals map. So the key is gonna be a string, the value is gonna be a string, and then we have the actual content of that map. Um, so let's go ahead and say query. So this is pretty standard when it comes to GraphQL. And rather than trying to fit everything on one line, we're going to use the back tick character to represent a multi-line string. And we're going to add a comma after it so that way it doesn't complain. This is where we're going to want to use that particular query that we saw in our web browser. So I'm just going to actually copy and paste it. So I'm going to copy that query. I'm going to paste it in. And I'm going to format it so that way it looks a little easier to read. And we're doing a multi-line string because we want our code to be readable long term. So I'm going to save it. It's still going to yell at us because we're not using JSON data uh, as well as we're not using a request. So let's go ahead and fill in this uh, JSON data. So this nil item, uh, we want to fill it in with a, uh, I think it was an IR reader. Uh, so we do need to convert this map into something that's usable here. So what we can say is we can say json.marshall and we're going to provide an interface. So JSON data. Um, so that's what we're providing right now. Uh, it's going to return either a slice of byte or an error. So we're going to say JSON value is going to be the slice of bytes. Otherwise, we're going to we're going to take in that error. And if there was an error, we're going to say if error 
not equal to nil, and we're going to panic. Now, um, I am using a, col a semicolon here. I'm using a semicolon here because these are two different values here. Um, but let's go ahead and plug in JSON value. Uh, we can't just plug it in as is, but we can turn it into a buffer. So we can say bytes, so a slice of bytes to buffer. So new buffer. And we're going to pass in that, that slice of bytes, which is JSON value. Uh, and this is something that the post request can understand. And you'll notice that the error on line 21 went away. We're still not using request, hence the error. Um, so let's go ahead and plug that in and make use of it. So to do that, we need to create a new HTTP, uh, an HTTP um, client. So the client is going to execute this request. So what we can say is we can say client equals HTTP.client. And we're going to leave it blank. We're not going to provide any options. Uh, we could add timeouts, things like that. But it's not a necessity for this particular example. Next up, we need to execute that request with the client. So we're going to say client.do, and we're going to provide it a request. But you'll notice that it takes a request and it re returns a response or an error. Um, so we're going to say request, and we're going to catch the response as well as the error. So we're going to say response, error, and we're going to panic if there's an error. So if error not equal to nil, we're going to panic, and uh, we'll get an error because we're not using response quite yet. Um, so let's go ahead and make use of it. Um, so we, we potentially have this response. Uh, we do want to follow good practice here. We want to do some cleanup uh, when our function ends. We want to make sure that we close uh, the response body. Uh, we can do that with a defer statement. So we're going to say defer. Uh, we're going to say response.body.close. Um, so when this main function uh, terminates, this defer is going to call, and it's going to close the body. Not so bad. Um, next up. Let's go ahead and take a look at that body. So we can actually read from it. We can use the IOUtil to read from the body. So we're going to say IOUtil, and we're going to say read all. And what does that take, actually? Read all. Um, so it takes a reader. Um, so that's going to be our response body, and it returns a slice of byte or an error. Um, so read all response.body. And it's going to return, like I said, a slice of byte or an error. So we're just going to say data error. And we're going to do something if, if an error is there. So we're going to say if error not equal to nil. We're going to say, uh, let's just panic. We're doing panic because um, if there is a panic, we still want the defer to happen. It's a little different than saying log.fatal where the, the defers won't happen. Uh, so that's why we're doing panic. Um, so we're not using data yet, so let's go ahead and make use of it. Um, let's go ahead and say fmt.println. Uh, data is a slice of byte, so we probably want to wrap it as a string. Um, and we're going we're gonna to save it, and let's go ahead and run it. So we're going to say go run main.go. So you'll notice it's giving us an error. Um, this is not a Go-related error. This is the actual response that we're getting on line 41. So that's what we're printing out. Um, so this is most typically uh, body parsers and Node.js uh, package. Um, so we, we need to make an adjustment here. Um, in most circumstances, it's probably because we failed to provide the type of data that we're sending to the server. Um, so what we want to say to the server is, hey, we're sending you JSON data. Um, go ahead and interpret it as such. Um, and we can do that with just a simple header. Um, so let's go ahead and do the following. Let's go ahead and say request dot header dot add and let's go ahead and say content type and this is going to be um, application slash json so now we're saying we're sending uh, application json formatted data let's go ahead and try to run it again and this time around we got a big long crazy response uh, but if we look at any of these particular data items uh, we'll know that uh, we're getting the country code the name and the currency which is what we've requested up in our GraphQL query. Um, so it wasn't so bad, uh, and, it, and it actually wasn't too hard to read. Um, so it, it was quite clean as long as we're doing a multi-line string. But this is just a simple HTTP request in Go, uh, because at the end of the day, most GraphQL implementations are still HTTP oriented. Uh, it's just we're sending a query as the payload. Um, so we're actually going to look at another way to do business. 
Um, so it, I'm going to give you some options to choose from. We're actually going to look at another option uh, when it comes to GraphQL consumption, and it's going to be um, using a package that somebody made. And I personally don't prefer to do this route. Uh, a lot of people might, but I'll let you be the judge. Um, so we're going to actually install this in our project. Uh, we could use DEP if we want. I'm going to just follow the instructions here and say uh, go get for this particular package. So I'm going to basically install it globally on my machine. So I'm going to paste it in and we're going to make some adjustments now. And I'm going to leave this in my terminal in case you want to visit that site later. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, let's go ahead and comment out everything that we've done. Um, I know it, it, it seems bad. We've just undone everything that we've tried to do. I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, let's, we're just going to do everything over again, um, but let's go ahead and say GraphQL. Actually, what we want to say is we want to say GraphQL dot new client, and we want to provide the URL. Um, so let's go ahead and go back into Chrome. Let's go ahead and, and copy that URL that we were using. Uh, we'll go back into our browser. I will save it. Uh, this actually, let's see what it returns. So it takes an endpoint and any options that we want to provide, and it returns a GraphQL client. Um, so let's go ahead and make use of it. Whoops. GraphQL client. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new GraphQL request. Um, so I'm going to say GraphQL dot request. And this is just a um, actually new request. My apologies. So this is going to take a query string. So it's going to be the same thing that we saw uh, with that um, map that we created. So it's just going to be the actual GraphQL query. Uh, and it's going to return a GraphQL request, which we're going to execute with a client. So we're going to say new request. I'm going to do another multi-line string because it does keep things uh, very easy to understand. I'm going to copy uh, what we have. I'm actually going to do it from the browser so I don't have to deal with any, any commas or not commas, uh, comments. Um, so let's go ahead and copy that, paste it in. I accidentally got the comment in there. Uh, let's go ahead and, and format this. We're just doing the same thing two different ways. So I save it. And now what we want to do is we want to run it. Um, so let's go ahead and, and create kind of an object on where we want to store the results. Uh, because it's a little different from the, the response body that we saw in the standard HTTP request. Um, so I'm going to say var, I'm going to say GraphQL response. This is going to be just an interface. Um, you could easily create your own native Go data structure if you want, uh, but I'm being lazy here. Um, but what we can do is we can say GraphQL client, which is what we had created, dot run. Uh, it's going to take a context, which we can just provide as a background context or whatever you prefer. Maybe you want to add a timeout to it. Uh, we're going to provide the request, um, and we're going to provide what we want the response to be stored in. So let's go ahead and try it out. So we're going to say context. This is part of Go. So this is going to be background. We're going to say GraphQL uh, request, which we don't have. Um, so let's go ahead and say GraphQL request. This is on line 38. Um, so GraphQL request. Uh, we want to store it inside of GraphQL response. And uh, it does return an error, so uh, we're going to want to capture it. So we're going to say error equals um, GraphQL uh, client.run. So we're going to say if error not equal to nil, we're going to say panic. Otherwise, what do we have here? Oh, this is the first use of error. So uh, colon there, let's see what we have. Graph this is GraphQL request. Um, everything checks out so far. So let's say fmt.println. And we're going to say GraphQL um, response. So I saved it. Let's go ahead and try to run it. So I'm going to say go run main.go. And you'll notice that uh, it, it captured everything we expected. Um, now you'll notice that it is an interface, so the, the print format is going to be a little different than what we received in the, in the previous way of doing business with just a, a standard Go HTTP request. Um, but you can create a native Go data structure. You can add uh, JSON annotations. You can format this however you want. 
But uh, just kind of going back here, um, two different ways to execute GraphQL queries. Um, and these could easily be mutations as well. But this is all done in your Go application. So this is the first way we saw was just using a standard Golang, um, as you can say, uh, HTTP request. It was a post request. Um, we did, for this particular example, need to specify the type of data that we were sending. Uh, whereas the other way that we used uh, was an actual uh, package that somebody else had created. Um, they, I mean, for the amount of code that you write, in my honest opinion, um, I'm, for one, perfectly happy just using the standard Go HTTP request for this. But, you know what, use whatever works for you. And the, neither of these might work for you. Maybe you want to look at some of the other options that exist online. It's perfectly acceptable. Um, but regardless, uh, you're going to find that it's not too difficult to do.